agricultural practices. The process of farming is completed through these steps. Preparation of soil, sowing, transplantation, adding manures and fertilizers, irrigation, weeding, harvesting, threshing, winnowing, storage, preparation of soil. This is the first step of farming through which soil is made suitable for sowing. The soil particles should be loose to get enough air and moisture. The process of loosening and turning the soil is called ploughing or tilling. This is done with the help of plough that is made up of wood or iron. Nowadays, ploughing is done with the help of tractors. Ploughing is essential because 1. It loosens the soil to get maximum air and moisture that is essential for the growth of plants. 2. It loosens soil so that roots can penetrate easily. 3. The loose soil also helps the microbes and worms to move freely. The earthworm is the best example that makes the soil more fertile by their burrowing habit. 4. The unwanted grasses and weeds are uprooted. When soil particles become fine and loose, it is leveled. Leveling is important because it checks the soil from being blown off by wind and drained off by water. It helps in uniform distribution of water during irrigation. Now, the soil is ready for sowing. Sowing When soil is prepared, seeds are sown either manually or by machines. The manual random scattering of seeds is called broadcasting. The seed drill is also used for sowing which maintains the proper distance between the seeds. Transplantation the seeds of rice and many vegetables are not sown directly. They are first sown in a nursery in a smaller area and allowed to grow into small plants called seedlings. These seedlings are then transplanted into larger fields. Precautions Some precautionary measures are to be followed to get maximum yield. These are 1. Seeds should be of good quality, disease resistant and high yielders. 2. Seeds and seedlings should not be too close because they will not get proper nutrition and air. 3. Seeds should be sown at proper depth. Adding manures and fertilizers. Before sowing, fertility of the soil should be checked. Presence of minerals and nutrients make the soil fertile. Repeated crops use up these nutrients. Some of the nutrients are washed away by running water. Thus, fertility of soil is lost. Therefore, we replenish these nutrients in the soil. Manures and fertilizers are added in the soil to store its fertility. Manures are of two types. 1. Natural manures. 2. Artificial manures or fertilizers. Natural manures. Natural manures are also called organic manures and are made up of organic waste product of animals and plants. They may be farmyard, compost and green manure which improve the soil fertility. 1. Farmyard manures May be dung, urine of cattle and solid and liquid wastes. 2. Compost Compost is a mixture of straw, kitchen waste, animal excreta, decaying leaves etc. The organic substances are kept in a pit and this pit is covered by thin layer of soil and is kept for few months. After decomposition, it is used in the fields. 3. Green manuring Green manuring is the practice of growing, ploughing and mixing of green crops into the soil to improve the fertility and productivity of soil. It is a cheap and best method to increase soil fertility. Roots of these crops contain some bacteria, rhizobia, which fix the atmospheric nitrogen and supplement the soil. Such fertilizers are also called biofertilizers. Examples, bursim, pea, gram, etc. Artificial manures, fertilizers. These are a mixture of chemical compounds and are produced in the factories. 
These are of three types. One, nitrogen fertilizers. They contain more nitrogen. Example, urea, calcium ammonium nitrate, ammonium chloride, etc. Two, phosphorus fertilizers. They have more phosphorus. Example, ammonium phosphate, superphosphate, bone meal, etc. Three, potassium fertilizers. They contain more potassium. Example, potassium chloride, potassium sulfate, etc. Precautions. Some precautions are to be followed before application of fertilizers, which are as one, soil test should be made before application of fertilizers. Two, fertilizers should not be used in dry soil. Bio fertilizers. These are organisms like bacteria, blue green algae, or fungi, which enrich the soil in nutrients. These bio fertilizers are used as an alternative to overcome the harmful effects of these chemical fertilizers. Activity: Making compost in school garden. Ask the gardener of your school to help in the process of making compost. Select a suitable site in the garden and ask a labourer to dig a pit of two meter long, one meter wide, and one meter deep. Spread a layer of straw. And other farm wastes. Now, fill the pit by cow dung, rotten vegetables, paper, leaves, and other biodegradable wastes up to the top, and finally cover this layer by mud. Leave it for three to four months. These wastes decompose over time into nutrient-rich substance called compost. It can be used in farms to increase fertility without any adverse effects. Activity: Vermiculture. Setting up a small unit in the school garden. Prepare a pit of one meter wide, one meter long, and one meter deep at a suitable site in your school. Fill the pit by cow dung, paper, leaves, and other organic wastes. Keep this mixture moist and add fifty to one hundred earthworms, and cover this by a layer of mud for four to five months. When you will open this. The mixture would be dark-colored organic manure, which can be used in farmyards. This organic manure, prepared by the help of activity of earthworms, is called vermiculture. Irrigation. Water is essential for the growth of plants. Irrigation is the supply of water to a dry area, especially in order to help the crops to grow. Watering is done through rainfall. Or by artificial means, the water for irrigation may be taken from rivers, tanks, or tube wells, etc. The methods of irrigation are flood irrigation. Flood irrigation is used for close-grown crops such as rice, where fields are leveled and water is abundant. Basin irrigation. Basin flooding is used in orchards with basins built around trees. And filled with water. Furrow irrigation. Furrow irrigation is employed with row crops such as cotton and vegetables. Parallel furrows, called corrugations, are used to spread water over fields that are too irregular to flood. Sprinkler irrigation. Sprinkler irrigation uses less water and provides better control. Each sprinkler spaced along a pipe. Sprays droplet of water in a continuous circle until the moisture reaches the root level of the crop. Drip irrigation, drip or trickle irrigation delivers small but frequent amounts of moisture to the root area of each plant by means of narrow plastic tubes. Precautions: one, irrigation should be done with certain interval. Two, right amount of water is required to irrigate the crop. Neither too little nor too much. Three, excess water can destroy the crops. Four, continuous watering can cause the accumulation of salts that can destroy the crops.